Yo, what's up everyone? Before we start this episode, I just want to say thank you to everyone who pre-ordered a Sick Days podcast t-shirt. Ali, Jose, Isaiah, Sereno, Fabian, Lily, Phil, Drea. Thank you guys. That really helped me a lot. And now I'm able to get those shirts made. And I got a new microphone for the next episodes. I recorded three of them already, so the next three episodes are not going to have that microphone usage. But the ones after that will. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you helping me move the show forward from here. I am a little drunk right now. I just watched the Super Bowl. Go 49ers, even though they lost, I guess. I don't know. What did you guys think? Who would you want to win? Um, I also talk about eating a dog in this episode with Bradley. And I don't really eat dogs. So thank you guys for listening. Enjoy this episode. Dun, dun. Hello, Bradley. Hello, my man Carlos. <laughs> so today we have Bradley and we're using one mic so I don't have any issues. He listens to the podcast but he hasn't heard any of the issues that I've been hearing but I hear them. So we're doing one mic and I was going to get a better one but this lady backed out on a trade with Pokemon cards but we have been pre-ordering t-shirts and thank you to everyone who's been pre-ordering. Uh, shouts out Jose, shouts out Ali, Isaiah, Leilani, Sereno, Fabian, Thank you guys. That helps me get closer to getting better gear for the podcast. But um, today we're interviewing the self-proclaimed weatherman fanatic named Bradley. Weatherman B. Yeah, you're Weatherman B. I think so. So, Bradley, can you tell me about your job? My job? Well, I forecast the weather for the most part. I work at a company and... Went to school up in Washington, learned about meteorology, it, all sorts of things about the weather. I learned too much, but not so much that I couldn't make it out of school. I barely made it through, but I did make it through, learned how to forecast what those clouds you see every day are doing and all that good stuff. Was able to turn it into a bit of a career, and here I am. Sweet. I'm going to open up the cider you gave me. All right. Cheers, bro. Let's go. Bradley doesn't drink, but he offered me a cider, and so he's going to drink the cider with me. Right. Last, I almost said no to the cider, because last time I had a cider was when my appendix burst. And so well, I stayed away from them. So we'll see if my appendix I didn't burst. know that. Now I feel a little bad. No, no, don't worry. <laughs> do you have, like, health insurance that I need to call just in case? No. no. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Oh, it's Jamaica flavor. Is that what it is? I thought it said. I thought it was a Jamaican cider, Jamaica. but it's Golden State cider. Jamaica and, flavor. Yes. Yeah, but it's Jamaica. Jamaica. Yes. This tastes like the Jarito drink. Have you have you seen that one? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. So this is Jamaica. It's a Mexican flavor. I assume. From what it's, I know, it's a Mexican flavor. It is not Jamaica. It's not Jamaica. It's Jamaica, and it's okay. It's spelled the same way as Jamaica. But it's good. This yeah. is really tasty. It doesn't taste like most ciders I taste. Yeah, no, there's some, like, the guy I used to work with worked, he did some stuff with a cider company, I think it's around here. I tasted that one, and it was not good. Not good at but all. But I, I had to be nice, and I told them like, it was mm, all right. <laughs> this shit's good. <laughs> right. But yeah, this one's not too bad. It's pretty good. So, Bradley, I know you're wondering why did I choose to make a podcast with you? Because uh, you don't, you said you don't really talk too much, and you don't think you're interesting, but I think you're a pretty interesting fellow. You were literally chasing a storm yesterday before recording this. Um, <laughs> Chico locals know, Northern California knows. We had like a flash flood warning for the whole state, and Bradley messaged me. He's like, "Hey, I've been chasing the storm," and er- <laughs> which is the exact opposite of what everyone else has been doing all day. Everyone's been bunkered, like. <laughs> DoorDash was extremely busy. Like I was doing some DoorDashes, and they're like, oh. "We need people." And I was like, "I'll, I need money, so I'll do it." But it looked so bad out there while I was driving. I was like, "This isn't worth me getting hit by a tree." Like, so I drove back yeah. home after I delivered one, and I was like, "I'm just gonna chill for the night." And, and meanwhile, I'm... you send me a video <laughs> of like the storm looks crazy. Like this is awesome, and you were following it. How far did you go with it? Um. So this one was interesting because. A lot of times you can have like thunderstorms that, you know, sit in one place for a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. These were moving like 50, 60 mile an hour because the way the low was coming in, it was just tossing storms north up the valley. 
and so I just kind of drove up the hill and watched him like go by. <laughs> like, so, what does that mean? Uh, For anyone who doesn't understand, because I just listened to you say that, and I assumed sixty mile per hour winds were coming from the north, right, and just swooped into the valley. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, so the winds were out of the south. They're from the south. They were going around the low pressure, which was you know just off to the west of California. So everything was basically getting sweeped into California and then up to the north and embedded like in the winds are like cells. They call them cells. Okay. They're thunderstorms basically. Okay. And thunderstorms form when you have kind of warmer air below, colder air above. The warm air wants to rise. Mm-hmm. It punches up like a bubble. And for everyone listening, like my hands are telling the story here. I know. So. Eventually, I'll have cameras. <laughs> we'll do it again, and we'll have a video camera with your but, hands. But yeah, the storms just bubble up, and then you know when they mature, they pop high enough. It turns into like a strong thunderstorm. And so you can basically imagine all these bubbles of clouds, and then they're moving north at sixty miles an hour. Mm-hmm. So if they're not, if they're moving maybe ten miles an hour, you can sit there and watch them follow them they're Mm -hmm. moving 60 miles an hour you can't like drive on the highway and all the way chase them because they're going too fast so the clouds move faster than your car at that point pretty much or you know like maybe if you're on i-5 you could keep up with them Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. the stoplights on 99 (laughs) and all that stuff nah so i it's really funny (laughs) because now i'm imagining like you and your car going really freaking fast on a like stormy day and everyone's like man that guy must be late somewhere no you're following the storm you're just like how long can i stay in here which is like the opposite of whatever else wants to do like i don't like staying in rainy weather like i actually this week not funny story but kind of um in my sense um i bumped into someone's car and on my monday of work um and they this was last week and i scratched their rear bumper right and me being a good citizen, I pull. <laughs> I drove in, and my turn was too wide, and I ended up hitting the rear bumper of the car, and I was like, "God damn it!" I pull out. Nobody gets out of the car. I was waiting for someone to like get out of the car and be like, "What the hell did you just do?" <laughs> and it was a decent car, like the person looked like they really loved their car. And I pull out. I go park to the side. I don't see anyone, and. I was like, God fucking damn it. I got to leave my insurance in my name. I Like, uh, this is the last thing I needed. And, like, there was no camera. So I could have left. There was no one. No one got out of their cars. No one was like, hey, this guy hit somebody. But, right. as you know, I have the warrant thing. Yeah. And so the last thing I and needed was someone be like, hey, yeah, I saw that guy hit a car. Arrest him. Right. And if he did, you probably wouldn't bring it up on a podcast. No? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hold liable. No, I will. Anything that happens, I let you guys know. But, um, so I gave the insurance. I wrote down the insurance, my insurance information, my phone number, and um, this was at Butte College, and uh, I go to the front desk, and this girl helps me out to get the number for the campus police, because I wanted to report it, so that way there's no sign of me being like, I was trying to avoid the situation, mm-hmm. and um, the next day I get a message, and it turns out the girl who gave me the, the information to call the campus police was the car I hit, and so I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of awkward, but yesterday when it was pouring rain she sends me a text of her car and it got totaled because she was hydroplaning and on the freeway and her car got totaled and she's like well i don't know what to do about the scratch <laughs> and i was like well i already filed an insurance claim they already called me so like there's nothing i could do at this point i'm yeah. sorry that happened to you and i'm truly glad you're okay but Great. i did my part and like Jeez. that's it's dangerous to drive out there. So to think that you were out there enjoying yourself like to the fullest extent. Right. I, I can't say I recommend it. I definitely enjoy it when I do it, though. And I definitely get scared sometimes, especially with the winds last night, just seeing all the branches all over the roads. That's like one thing I think about all the time is like people driving out in windstorms. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to get real deep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. But like... You hear this all the time. Someone is driving in a windstorm and a tree falls on their car. Mm -hmm. It is less than a second from that tree not hitting their car. Anything in their day leading up to this moment, one second here or there, and it doesn't get hit. 
I think about that kind of stuff. That's crazy to me. Like, you miss a stoplight, or you pass someone, or you don't pass someone. And like, I've I've seen the stories where these people die, and it's like, dang, they were like that one stoplight away from just like. Anyways, that just blows my mind. Is that what you think about when you're driving in the storm? A little bit. Like maybe I should slow down just, <laughs> just a, a tiny little bit. bit. I'm very. I the adrenaline gets going, and I'm like, yeah, storm, and then I just mindset is just straight on the storm is but, that what it is so you get like a huge adrenaline <laughs> rush when you go out there oh yeah for yeah. sure like i'm watching this giant thunderstorm like try and kill me yeah that's like the <laughs> best thing ever dude. <laughs> dude that makes sense uh, um about the the, the timing thing uh, mm -hmm. when i got in one of my first car accidents um it was on my finals day at college when i went to shasta college in red bluff and if I just took one second longer on my test, it would not have happened. I was the first one done with my test. Mind you, I didn't really know anything. Never do that. I was speeding through that, that test because I just wanted to go home. And I was yeah. like, I didn't, I didn't even care. Like, I've if I just there. took one more second, literally heading out of the, the college parking area, um, mm -hmm. I got T-boned by this truck. Damn. And it totaled. I was driving my mom's Eclipse, and I also did not have a license at the time. And my mom wasn't under the name of the insurance of the car. It was my uncle's name. And this guy in his truck T-bones me at a stop sign. And I swear I looked left and right. And uh, I almost died because of that. Like, yeah. if, I, if I went out any farther after that stop, stop sign, I would have just gone destroyed. But um, luckily, that didn't happen. Um, the guy who was driving a Ford F-150, I'm pretty sure is what it was, he wasn't driving his own truck he was actually a mechanic and they just fixed up that truck oh or something and he took it out for a test drive <laughs> so we both were driving vehicles that weren't ours mm -hmm. and they both got totaled and i got so lucky i did not get a ticket <laughs> <laughs> mm. and um that guy ended up suing me oh. and, yeah because he said something about his, his disability stopped giving him money or something like that Luckily, I won the case. You know, I just be in a lot of cases lately. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we win them all, all right? <laughs> this one's just a chapter in my case study. But uh, I, you're just going to become a lawyer someday. I eventually. I was like, I've been through it. That'll be my pitch. Like, look, I've been through it. I've been in totals. <laughs> my identity has been stolen. I know what to do. I'm on your side. But um, yeah, if I just waited one more second on taking my test, that wouldn't have happened. And it's just. Is, I hate thinking about that, that yeah. how different all that whole situation would be. I walked the rest of the semester, the next semester. And I was like, God damn it. My right. mom had to pay higher insurance fees. I didn't have a car for a long time. And it was like literally because I didn't take one more second. But also that guy could, wasn't supposed to be test driving his truck. So like, <laughs> yeah. if he wasn't test driving that day, that wouldn't have happened. So it, deep. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny because there was this homeless guy across the street who was like, yo, man, I saw all that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, if you ever need me, here's my phone number. And he, he was going super fast, be it the speed limit was like 40 miles per hour there. And I, like I said, I swear I looked left, then right, then left, and went. So he must have been going really freaking fast for me not to see him yeah. and then to hit me. Fast forward like six months later when I have my court date because they were asking me why I didn't have my license. And I was being a smart ass. And they, when they went up there and they're like, hey, so where's your license? And like, it's in the mail. Because around that same time, I turned 18, and I did my driver's test after my like a week after that car accident. Mm -hmm. So I had my driver's license, and like, okay, you're free to go. <laughs> and that was all my good karma. Like I used it all up. <laughs> but that day of my court date, I was ch chilling outside waiting for my dad to pick me up, and uh, that same homeless guy that was there at the accident like four or five months before, he he's standing right there. He's like, hey, you're that guy I saw get in a car accident. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You want to hit at this joint? <laughs> like, <laughs> like no, I have court. <laughs> like, I don't want to smoke that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny instance. I'm sorry I got sidetracked, but the whole talk about no, taking your, take your time when you're driving. All right, <laughs> I've seen so many accidents happen. And uh, I, yeah. I take my I, time. No, I feel it. I haven't actually gotten in a wreck like that, but I have been on the lucky side of those things. Mm -hmm. Not to make you feel bad. I, do, no, I don't feel bad at all. I think it's unlucky. funny more than anything. Like, anytime something like that happens, I treat it as a joke. Mm -hmm. That's probably how I cope, but it just makes to a funny story. 
right. at some point and i think that's the best way to get over those situations is by like laughing at it right and making it funny and interesting for someone to hear oh yeah that's that's how i do things too <laughs> for sure but yeah like i've i drive a lot because i storm chase and i go up to lake tahoe whenever i can just because it's great up there and one of the days i was coming back and this is on highway 20 like near where it meets i-80 middle of the woods Mm -hmm. no cell service or anything and i see like you know i have like google maps whatever and it's saying do this huge long detour the road is closed and i'm like what no like this road has to be open there's Mm -hmm. no way there's this long detour so i followed it and then i came up to this you know like car accident scene Mm -hmm. and like there was like a trail like a truck with a trailer boat on the side of the road and another car was just flat into a tree no way and i don't think like there was people behind them but there was there was like one cop on scene and Mm -hmm. they were calling the paramedics and stuff i don't know if you know like people probably got injured but i don't know what else happened Mm -hmm. and like i read the report on that because you can look those up on caltrans Mm -hmm. and this dude tried to pass like five cars around a blind curve oh, dude i just experienced it where people try to do that next to me and i'm like why are you doing this on a curvy road right and like i mean on a straight road all right yeah yeah it's you, doable. Do, you do whatever you, yeah. yeah i mean just don't kill me but like on a blind curve mm-hmm. just like give it a few seconds maybe there'll be a straightaway yeah. or something like that anyways I, I after i seen that i'm like wow i could have like not gotten food earlier in the day and i could have been right there when this guy is barreling around this corner yeah, and yeah i think about that way too much but... <laughs> <laughs> it gets in your head <laughs> but yeah luckily i have been on the lucky side of things and that's probably not well, yeah was not on wood dude like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> so how long have you been doing storm chasing how long have I been storm chasing? Yeah, like what? Like, do you remember your first one? I mean, if do you remember like the year and the month and the date? Is it like that memorable not. for you? <laughs> okay, I thought there was like this one thing, like where you—that's like your first kiss. Like you remember every little piece of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see you remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I do. I do remember my first kiss. Like I, oddly enough, I saw this person. My my first kiss slash first girlfriend. Um, I saw her at Winco like a few months ago and it was just all it, the memories came flooding. it's weird it's so weird because like you're like we had something there for a second and oh it's just a quick look and turn away like you turn away from that person you're just like oh shit ah but yeah. like you don't remember your first storm chase no so i mean i remember my first storm chase in california when i right after i moved here okay well let's backtrack a bit what got you into storm chasing let's do that instead i mean i've been into weather pretty much my whole life Mm -hmm. um if i want to go all the way to the beginning of that yes there was a weatherman up in seattle his name is steve Poole, and he was like the coolest guy Mm -hmm. he was super chill he would tell you the weather on tv he'd know when to be funny he'd know when to be serious and he seemed like your friend or whatever so when i was a little kid like i don't know less than five years old i really like enjoyed listening to this guy watching the weather and i thought it was like the coolest thing and i kind of wanted to be a weatherman after that Mm -hmm. and then i grew up grew out of that you know whatever like little kid phase or whatever (laughs) are you sure (laughs) because like you're still chasing weather dude (laughs) A little bit. If I could, if we could <laughs> at least for everybody, a go on what's the local weather station here? Oh man, I don't even know. You work for the weather. <laughs> I don't work for the news, but okay. <laughs> if you want to check out my YouTube, yes, <laughs> check that out. Just Make look up Bradley the Weatherman. <laughs> Just petition look. starts now. You go to Channel Twenty News or something like that. I think that's what it is. Whoever it is, Rebel of Chico area, Reading. Say, hey, when's Bradley going to host the, the weather? That's what we want. We want Bradley to host the weather. I want to see Bradley in a suit up there giving technical terms. And, like, I'm like, take, that's the guy. That's the guy. Take off the suit and maybe I'll do it. But, yeah. 
No, I mean, so yeah, like I actually wanted to be a weather guy like that for a little bit. Um, then I saw the movie Twister. That's a classic. When I was like, I don't know. Wait, how old are you? 10. I don't know. It's you don't know how old like, you are? Right now. Bro, are you? Oh, right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I saw Twister, I don't know. But yeah, no, I'm 31 now. So okay. Um, this was at least 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. So I'm like 28. That sounds about right. So when you were about seven or eight? Something like that. Okay, that makes sense. Because so I saw it when I was a little kid, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> and naturally, like, I thought this was the sickest movie I had ever seen. And got super into, like, tornadoes. And was literally, like, in school, I would draw them all over everything. Really? I don't know if you've ever done it, but you just take a pencil and you just go back and forth. Make it smaller and smaller, and then you got a tornado. I'm not gonna lie to you. I drew I drew penises, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was drawing penises like everyone in school. Was no way. So you were so you were just doing tornadoes, and then like the kid next to you is just like, like this being the best. Like every, super bad came out, so like everyone in high school, especially, was drawing freaking girthy dudes oh all over math textbooks. Dude. I remember opening it up, and it would say, "Turn to page 48," and you look over there and it's either a pair of boobs or it's like a giant penis. So I'm old enough that I didn't get into the drawing penises. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> you're expunged from that, dude. Like, yeah, there were penises everywhere at school, like bathroom oh. walls, and like it was not a good time for teachers. Like, they spent money, like taxpayer money, my money now. Now that I realize that I'm paying for some kid in school to draw a penis on his textbook, like I'm okay with that though. I'm okay with that. You do you. But, yeah. So you skipped that. You were too early for that phase. I was. I was the what? tornado dude. Yeah. Was and anyone else drawing tornadoes though? Not that I know of. Were they drawing the weird S? Anyone that they were probably yeah. The little definitely. S logo they that, were one, the that S. was drawn, drawn with us too. Yeah, but yeah, I was just drawing tornadoes, and I don't even think I realized how into weather I was back then. But like looking back, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would watch Twister over and over. Was super into that. Did you have it on VHS? Yes. Hell yeah. Oh my god, you know like the, the start scene from Twister? It's so vague for me. Like, I remember watching it multiple times, but the thing that sticks in my head was an R2-D2 looking thing being thrown into a tornado with a bunch of little balls in it. <laughs> like, that's what I, that's what I think. Like, that's, that's Dorothy. That's Dorothy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it has a name. So like, I just remember, <laughs> I remember a group of scientists who loved weather chasing or storm chasing it was a love story too yeah it, yeah that's what I, they were storm chasing and they had their own they had their dorothy and then this other group of people kind of stole their idea mm -hmm. and they were trying to beat them to it right is that the plot it is the plot they're okay. they're trying to save lives that's okay. what they're all doing yeah one guy's after the money mm -hmm. one guy's you know just wanting to save people's lives yeah that's the whole plot and I mean, there's obviously a lot of drama and you know when I watch it as a kid, I'm just like, cool, tornadoes destroying everything. But when I watch it now, I'm like, oh, my God, there's so many plot holes and all of this weather <laughs> stuff. And <laughs> How'd they survive the tornado? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did they literally hold on to a pipe and just, like, not get Now hit that you by... have all your weather knowledge, you're like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but going back to the start scene. Yeah. It's Taz, the Tasmanian devil. Uh -huh. The very first scene with twister is the tasmanian devil doing his thing oh and after that like i was like obsessed with taz but mm. i still didn't know i was like into weather and yeah. like, i had a taz shirt and it, and it was like tornado. my favorite shirt dude. that's funny <laughs> have you seen a tasmanian devil in real life no you know why they call Those them are real things they're real dude he's based <laughs> off a real animal in australia they don't actually do the tornado they maybe. don't but <laughs> the reason why they call them tasmanian devils is because uh um apparently when the british would take so you know australia it was originally just like a jail originally look it up if i'm wrong i'm wrong but <laughs> australia was originally just um a giant prison island from britain from britain so I'm they would bring today. yeah they brought all the prisoners over and what would happen at night they would hear tasmanian devil it's like a little animal like a furry little animal and when it's in heat it would make these weird, like, gnarling sounds, like, oh my God. and they literally thought it was the devil in the woods, and it's just, like, an angry little thing. It's, like, it's just <laughs> yeah. mad, and so that's why so you hear Taz, you, he doesn't sound like, 
audible. <laughs> He's like, because that's how they base it off that sound. That's that's hilarious. I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think they spin around like that. No, like, it'd man, be funny. probably not. <laughs> it, but that's the basis of the Tasmanian double. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy. I never even like. I mean, I think I knew they were like a thing, but I definitely didn't know like how they got named that. Yeah, and that makes sense. It <laughs> makes a lot of yeah. Some animals are just like it's almost like a honey badger, or like honey badgers are just like just angry little animals. Yeah. You know, kind of want to see one now. The Tasmanian know, they have devil. Those in zoos. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just burped. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. No, it's a but... cider. I don't know if they have any in zoos. I've never seen one in a zoo. Yeah, man, I gotta find one now. Maybe I'll like have a pet. What's the most? Devil. What's the most exotic animal you've seen? Dude, I can't even pull that out of my head right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the wild or in a zoo? In a zoo. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell is the one you saw in the wild? <laughs> I don't know. A bear. You see, you've seen a bear in the wild? Yeah. I've seen lots of bears. I've seen. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I saw a bear and her cubs once me and my dad and our family used to go camp in eureka and one night we were camping we used to go to the sand dunes in eureka samoa dunes it's like where you could ride motorcycles and stuff like that like mm-hmm. quads and dirt bikes and they told us there was bears nearby so we camped in our trailer where we kept our motorcycles yeah. and we got woken up in the middle of the night to like rustling noises and we pe- opened the door in our trailer and we see the bear with its cubs going through our ice chest and it was it's such a Tongue. weird memory <laughs> yeah they were eating our tamales like <laughs> and our tortillas and i was like dude oh my god as a kid i was scared as hell because i think i was like nine or ten or something like that but yeah. that was the first time i saw an animal that big mm-hmm. and it's little cubs and it was like such a trip to like look at yeah. the only other time i've seen like a crazy wild animal was like literally like three months ago <laughs> and um i saw a coyote up here in chico uh, when I went to go, I woke up really early to go fishing, mm. and I'm like driving on the side of the road, and I see this. I thought it was like dog just walking. And as I got close, I was like, "That's a weird looking You're dog." Like, oh, I should go pick it up. It's lost. No. Yeah, it was just skinny <laughs> and like looks like. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's a coyote. That's so sick." <laughs> yeah. And it was heading towards the kids' park, and I was like, "Should I call somebody?" I'm like, nah. <laughs> so I uh, let it go. Yeah, but, coyotes are like all over, like back where. No I problem, live. dude. Yeah, back where I lived uh, up near Seattle, they had them all over, and, like, every night we'd hear them, and they sound like dying cats. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard a coyote. Sometimes I, they howl. I think I did, because one time I went to the same fishing spot at the end of the night, and I could hear howling. Right. And it's, like, a lot of them. Yeah. And they sound when close. They, when like, they kill something, they sound like they are dying. It's, like, I can't even make that noise, but... Like, a, hey, hey, hey. Like a dying cat, like I don't no know. way, it's crazy. <laughs> Have you heard cats in heat? Uh, I don't know. They sound so stupid. Like <laughs> I remember as a kid, the first time I heard a um, cat fighting or a cat in heat, I was like, "What?" I thought it was a baby crying. They go, <laughs> "Oh my god!" <laughs> you never heard that? I don't think so. Dude, like if it's two dudes and they're both like trying to get the female, they'll get angry at each other and they'll get to the territorial. And they'll go, it's like a really shitty siren. <laughs> like, it's really bad. It's annoying. I, I remember the them. first time I heard that, I had, like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Who left their baby outside? I've heard them, like, hissing, like, Shh. Yeah, they'll hiss, they'll but... hiss. But, like, man, like, I guess there's no cats around here that I can notice. But, like, if you, I, I just look I've out for it next time. Next yeah. time you see two cats, <laughs> sit outside look it and up. wait till I hear it, and then yeah. I'll, I'll hit you up. Right. I know now. I, you just FaceTime me, like, look, these cats are fighting, dude. <laughs> there you go. I lived next to an alleyway as a kid, so, like, that makes a lot of sense. But, but to come back, you watch <laughs> Twister, you started drawing the Taz from Looney Tunes mm-hmm. and Tornadoes, and you were, like, not knowing it yet, but you fell in love with the weather. For sure. Yeah. And... Through high school, like, I still didn't know it. Mm-hmm. We had a few, like, really interesting storms. Maybe only interesting to me, but we had a windstorm up there where the power went out at my house for a whole week straight because it was, like, 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts, and if you have been to Seattle, there is trees everywhere, and yeah. they fall on the power lines, and power goes out. I've so, only been up to Washington. Not <laughs> 
I won't even up to Oregon. Okay. I well, haven't gone past Portland. Oregon is pretty close. I yeah. mean, lots of evergreen trees. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. you've noticed, like, mm-hmm. but yeah. So trees everywhere, and the, all of them. Like, if they get a strong enough windstorm, they'll all go down and break the power lines. And so yeah, that was like one of the defining moments. I'm like, this storm was sick. Everything fell down. Like, this trees got destroyed. And, you know, kind of built up how I started to love the weather. And another time it got to like 103 degrees up there, which is crazy for up there. And it's actually topped that now. It got to 108 like a couple years ago. No way. But Dude, yeah. it's like 115 over here now. Right. It's hot. <laughs> and like, yeah, coming down here, I'm like, oh, that was not that hot. But, you know, up there it was like cool. I was young. I was like, this is crazy. And even when I started, like, I went to community college, didn't know what the heck I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just took the required classes, sucked at most of them, but I was good at physics. So, like, I started thinking I wanted to do physics, and that was going to be the worst choice of my life. (laughs) So... (laughs) Don't even feel bad about it, dude, because I'm the first person in my family to drop out of college twice. (laughs) <laughs> my mom my sister's the first one to graduate a university mm-hmm. my mom is the first one to get her teaching credentials um i don't know any of my other family members who've gotten any form of degree and there's a lot of us like mexicans have a lot of family members like and i'm pretty <laughs> sure my sister and my mom are the only ones with degrees my cuts i have a couple cousins working on it but i was the first one to go and drop out twice it's an I accolade mean, i have that's kind of what i did when i i actually took a year off after high school You know, like some people are like, I'm taking a year off to travel. I was like, I'm taking a year off because I don't want to go to college. (laughs) (laughs) It was hard, dude. But so you went to college and I went to community college and just did the required classes. And Mm -hmm. then I transferred into UW up there and still didn't know what I was going to actually get a degree in. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even thinking about weather. Mm -hmm. I took the classes I had some of which were, you know, electives that don't count towards anything. I took a class called Beginning Basketball. Let's go. <laughs> Fun class, but yeah, I, didn't I, get I, me I, anywhere. I was a bench warmer in middle school for basketball. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I should have taken that class. Yeah. I have a brother. He's like, he looks just like me, um, and uh, he's a lot taller than me. He's mm-hmm. really good at basketball. Like, Makes sense. He stall. Yeah, yeah, dude. Not fair, dude. You're I listening, Val. I, was... I love you. <laughs> but he's really good at basketball. I was never that good, but my dad wanted me good. But yeah, I was never gonna make it. I was too short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at what point did you decide like you want to do weather? That's the thing. Did you? It happened for me. Okay. I was like I like I was looking at all the classes I've taken, and I looked to find the fastest way to be done with college. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to do the perfect degree or anything like that. I was just like, here's the classes I've taken. How do I get out of here the fastest so I never have to go to school (laughs) again? And it turned out it was meteorology, atmospheric sciences. And the main reason behind that was because they didn't require two years of a language, which I didn't take yet. Huh. Most other degrees require you to take like two years of a foreign language, and I didn't want to do that because that, that would have. Is hmm? that just Washington? Because no, I've never heard of anyone I mean, over here having to take it, even though we do have a, like a strong mix of language over here. Maybe people should. Hmm. I'm not here to tell people what to take for college, <laughs> but there's a lot of Spanish and Hmong speaking people, especially in the North State. So maybe if they need an extra language to learn, <laughs> Spanish would be it. And this is for anyone who says they hate having to learn a new language. I'm sorry, I'm going to go on a rant real quick, okay? So, uh, I know a lot of people who hate the idea of people not speaking English in this country, and that's totally fine. You, I get it. You don't want to learn a new language, but I really don't think there's anything wrong with people having multiple languages as a subset in their, in their, in their catalog of things, because one, learning multiple languages helps you to helps you prevent Alzheimer's, okay? So there's a benefit to learning multiple languages right there. And Alzheimer's is a big issue, right? Also, most of the time, from what I experienced, I went to Hawaii once. And when I went there, it was a hotspot for tourism. So there was like eight different languages being spoken around me at all times. 
and I enjoyed it. Maybe that's just a personal thing, but <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with hearing multiple dialects and languages everywhere. I think it's great. Absolutely not. Like, I want to be clear. I definitely would love to learn another language. I was just being no, the really. laziest motherfucker on the planet, <laughs> not trying to take also, classes. If you don't want to learn another language, I don't care. I, like, I'm really not judging you if you don't want to learn another one. I just, I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with knowing multiple languages. Sure. <laughs> and like, I don't care if, if someone speaks a language that I don't know, I'm not offended. If mm-hmm. anything, I'm more interested. So I think maybe I don't know. That's my rant. I'm I'm almost done with the cider, <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't drank like in two weeks. So maybe that's what it's going on. But um, no, I, I feel it. I actually I did take two different languages while I, I went. I took Spanish in high school. Two mm-hmm. years of Spanish in high school. You don't learn much from that. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to retake that. Mm-hmm. And then in community college, I actually took American Sign Language. Oh, which, that's a language. It is. <laughs> what is that? Is that Jay? That's Jay. Okay, yeah. that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you how to say your name. I used to have um in my one of my old apartments. I used to in the bathroom like there was a toilet and right oh, across yeah. the toilet I put up a, a poster that had the the alphabet in sign mm-hmm. language. So I would like take a dump and I just like learn the alphabet at the same time. Sure. But I forgot it since I moved. Yeah. yeah. No, I I took two quarters of American Sign Language, which was cool because I'm actually hard of hearing and you know some people who are deaf actually speak with sign language mm-hmm. i did not get that far at all did you learn to read lips and you, uh well that's you know since i've been hard of hearing that's just something come you picked to up me. naturally yeah so you know what i'm saying most of the time if i'm staring at your lips like i what can about catch now? it can you, it's a little bit harder can you do you know what i'm saying yes bradley is handsome there's this funny thing with me though like bradley's a handsome man. <laughs> No. Now, now I'm gone. I anything's gone. No, He's the most like... handsome weatherman I've ever seen. Okay, I caught that one. Hell okay, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying, brother. That's what I'm saying, brother. No, no but like I didn't. I I wear hearing aids now, but when I was a kid, I was like, I do not want those. I will be like criticized. Yeah, I'll I'll be different, mm-hmm. and people will not lo- like want to like me or be my friend that's what i thought yeah but so throughout high school i didn't wear hearing aids and caused it basically i did terrible in school because of that because yeah. i couldn't hear shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> and teacher calling your name from the right side of the class is it your left or your right it's both it's both yeah so it's, how does that it's, work it's genetic but yeah i have one in each ear no way yeah my dad is he hears way less than me so, so. does he like if you took them both off, would it just be like half quality for both? Pretty much. I don't know if that's I mean, a dumb question. Yeah, well, you know, like since I grew up with it, like that's what I knew you, to know is you know, normal hearing. And putting hearing aids on, it's just like the volume's a little up, but Whoa, that's such a trip. <laughs> Everything's louder. When it's I worked at when I worked thing. at Starbucks, um, we had a coworker that um he was hard he couldn't hear from his right ear. Mm-hmm. Do I do I say hard of hearing? Or, or you yeah. don't care, or like yeah, no, that's offensive. Can I can I say deaf? <laughs> <laughs> you were deaf from his right ear. He no, yeah, he couldn't hear from his right ear, and I didn't know that. And so he was a barista, and I was a shift at the time. So yeah. I tell him to do something, <laughs> and, and it, it's it's loud in Starbucks, you know. Like you can't, you gotta yell. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be like, um, I'm gonna just say person, person. I need you to remake some mocha. And he would just stand there at the register. <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude, you need to remake Mocha. And he would just stand there. And I'd tap him and show him, like, hey, haven't you heard me? He's like, no, I'm deaf in my right ear. I'm like, right. mother. I, I look uh. like an idiot. Like, <laughs> did you experience that at all, like, uh, growing of up? Of course, dude. People okay. were like, Bradley, Anytime. take out the fucking trash. <laughs> uh, the, the main thing that always comes back in my head is when you go around a classroom and everyone's reading. Yeah. And, and they pick on you. You got to know where oh the reading God. starts. I can't hear anybody else. Yeah. So I got to like follow with my finger and try to gauge how fast people are reading. And then it's my turn to read out loud. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I hope this is right. <laughs> <laughs> that was two chapters ago, brother. Like, yeah. Has right. that happened? Like where you're like oh, completely I, I off? I think it has. And there's, there's probably been times where I said the exact same thing someone else had like just said. And I was just like, everyone just stared at me. And... And they no one know. understood because I didn't like didn't tell, tell anyone. Yeah. I thought it was weird and all that. I just kind of 
brushed it aside, and people probably thought I was dumb as hell. <laughs> 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 well, that's what happened back in the day. Like, I, if you were deaf, they'd all automatically assume you were dumb. Like, it was unfortunate, but that's what they would assume because like, you couldn't understand what they were saying. But really, they just yeah. couldn't completely hear. For sure. Yeah. When did then, you accept it? I mean, not till college. I did. You I, were you like okay? I was. Like, I'm not gonna be able to pass well, class. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean. Because going to, like, high school, I did not do good in my classes. I mm-hmm. did make it through, and, like, some of the classes I really understood. English, I didn't understand that great. But math, like, numbers made sense to me. Mm-hmm. You know, all you got to do is some stuff with them, and they <laughs> equal something else. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know. You didn't need to hear anything. You just had to look <laughs> right. at the symbols. Yeah. That makes sense. Math I think is I, universal, dude. I think I like took on a lot of learning by myself and just like taught myself things Mm -hmm. which probably made me a lot different than most people about how they do things and learn things like that excuse me so but yeah uh once i got to college i was like okay well maybe if i take this step i should probably get some hearing aids and actually hear my professors and shit like that (laughs) so i did it and it helped and Made it through a few classes, stumbled through another few, did some stuff I'm not proud of. Just kidding. Um. And then, dude, we all did. <laughs> it's okay. I just want everyone to know, if you're going to college right now, do not feel afraid to voice out when you need support because it could make or break you, right? Like, I work with students who need support, and um, I have some students who I don't know if they – actually told their professors that they are a student who needs support or extra support and so the professors treat them as an average student and so they don't give them as many chances or leeway like they tell them i'm gonna drop you if you don't do this Mm -hmm. but to the student they don't they can't process that they can't process that so it takes them a while to understand what the professor is saying Mm -hmm. and so if they don't say it like hey i'm a student with these type of needs they could potentially fail the class but also don't feel dumb in school because I would literally ask my biology teacher if it's beneficial to eat my own boogers in college. Like, <laughs> I have definitely failed classes, so don't feel bad if you fail a class too. Like, just pick yourself back up. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it'll come back to you. Maybe you're meant to take another class. I don't know. It, it's college is different, dude. Like my first run at college, I um, I didn't do great at all. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't do good. My second run, I was a, um. As much as this counts for a community college, I was on the dean's list. Like Ooh, I, I was yeah. a, I was a 4.0 student with the second time I came back. Like because I I'm not dumb. I just didn't do my work the first time. And like I loved all my classes that I took. Like I took sociology and like psychology, child development, and like math. I guess, but like um, history, I really like biology. I enjoy all those kind of like courses, but um, I was still dumb in a sense. Like. My favorite thing ever was when I got into sociology class, and um, my teacher was really good. He's a really good professor. Shouts out View College. You guys have really good freaking <laughs> professors, and they're always interactive, at least the ones I had. Um, we got into the idea of uh, not fetishes, but like um, outliers or um, uh, taboo. We had a lesson on taboo activities and how so in sociology – like, the idea of a taboo is just something that the society doesn't seem as normal. And um, the first thing my professor opened up with was, like, have any of you eaten dog before? What? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I was like, dude, what? And uh, he was like, I've eaten dog. How many of you guys think I'm, me- I'm messed up for doing that? And, like, of course, everyone raised their hand. I didn't because I'm not going to lie. If I had to eat a dog, I'd probably eat it. I'm sorry, Bradley. <laughs> I live through this idea that if, if something is going to... I am gonna... walking out of this right now. <laughs> you walk out of your own apartment. <laughs> Leave me in here. Like, I guess I'll have another beer. But, like, <laughs> I have this idea, like, if an animal's going to eat me, I'll eat that animal. Butterflies will eat you if you die. So I'm going to eat that fucking butterfly, dude. Like, I'm going to eat it. So I... cats will eat you if you die. There's been known instances where cats will eat their owners after they die. So I will eat my cat if I have to. If it, if it came to it, okay? I'm not going to do it on the regular... <laughs> Phil, if you're listening, I'm going to eat Link. But um, <laughs> I babysit his dog. But, um, <laughs> oh, my God. What are you, what are you thinking of doing? <laughs> but um, 
I just he put out the idea like society has their their norms right and it's only taboo if society deems it as taboo the funniest thing ever was when um, we were talking about fetishes as a taboo and um they was like can anyone name a fetish and it was really funny because i'm like the only guy in that class too dang and uh, it was just really funny because i'm like feet <laughs> i was the only one who raised my hand it's like yes foot fetish is what the professor said and uh and then, so all the girls just look at me <laughs> like, oh my God. one girl behind me is like so do you, do you like licking feet yeah. <laughs> i don't know if that was like looking back at it was, was she inviting me to lick her feet oh my god because yeah, i would have said yes like <laughs> you definitely i would have like i don't care like at the time like now i will still lick someone's foot like if my girlfriend wants me to lick her foot i will lick her foot oh. okay like i love her that's me i love you i will lick your foot if you want me to <laughs> I'm okay with that. Like, this man will do anything. <laughs> yes, I will. Like, if you want to peg me, I'll let you peg me. Like, if it's for love. <laughs> oh my god! But that was that's hilarious. Like, you could just like see which girls have a foot fetish, the yeah. way they react to you. Yeah, it, it was really funny. Now that I think about it, like, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't be afraid in school. Like, I, I will answer dumb don't questions. Don't be afraid and to will, have a fetish. Don't be afraid to have a fetish. <laughs> That's why I did this with you, Bradley, because weather is your fetish. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm not releasing this information. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's any ladies out there who also have a weather fetish, you know where to find Bradley. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, driving 60 miles an hour after a storm. Come catch me, you know? <laughs> there's there's going to be someone who enjoys that. I'm pretty sure. But, okay, I'm really sorry for the how much I've derailed your conversation here. But, like, <laughs> no, so you went to college. You went yeah. through those courses. I was like, this You were is... doing weather courses because it was the most convenient. Exactly. Okay. And then I freaking realized, you know, the middle of this. I'm like, wow. I remembered how much I like this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is awesome weather. Like, I understood it. Most of it, no. I'm. I really did not understand most of it, actually. But I liked it enough to keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> and met some cool professors. This one guy who's joking around all the time. It was a hilarious class. Other professors really didn't teach me very well. I'm just not going to name names, but drop them, dude. They're already all, all the way in Washington. Like, it's not like they're gonna, like, if they listen to this one no, specifically, this is, is going to become big. They you know? they happen to fall upon this one out of everything they listen to. Like, oh my, <laughs> you repost and like, oh, I, I don't I'm know. taking away your degree, yeah. Brad. <laughs> Bradley gets fired. <laughs> oh man, um, but yeah, I was like, this is really awesome, and then. The opportunity came up to do an internship with the dude I used to watch as a little kid. No way. Yeah. And I was like, that is sick. I'm going to do it. And I applied and went in for like an interview. And I'm talking to these guys who I like listened to on TV, read their forecasts. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, And, you know, I got to meet this guy. His name's Steve Poole. He's the nicest guy ever he's really cool on tv he actually passed away this year it's oh, really sad shit. but he rest in peace rest in peace steve pool we love you and you know condolences to your family whatever um my next well can i have a sec sorry yeah. side question <laughs> do you have like a reddit you go to or like a facebook page or an instagram page where you talk about your weather interactions i do not okay I don't do Reddit. Okay. So there's not a group of people that you talk to and be like, hey guys, this is the weather I fucking chase today. And other people are like, fuck yeah, dude, this is the weather I chase today. Okay. Well, Twitter. Okay. There's a Twitter. Catch me on Twitter, Brad WX Norcal. Excellent. It's chock full of things that nobody cares about except mm -hmm. for other weather people on Twitter. Do So you have like friendships with other weather people online? No, I wouldn't call them friendships. Acquaintances? But yes, yes. There's people, a connection. Yeah, there's, like, there you know, people is with skateboard, there. There's like a skateboarding page on Facebook. Oh, there's yeah. a weather tracking page where right. people chase, is it called like Storm Chasers or something? It better there's, be. There's a lot of different people on Twitter and like the weather community, like everyone just follows everybody else and like that's people chase cool. storms and they're like, that's so sick and they repost. It's, it's pretty sweet. That's hype. I mean, it's definitely like... 
I mean, I don't want to be like the guy who's like online, you know, like type it away. Well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, dude, these but sixty like, mile per hour woods are fucking sick, bro. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty okay cool for are. me. It's fun. Like, <laughs> I would definitely go on Reddit and like Twitter, and if I did go on, I do have a Reddit, but like I go there for dumb shit. But if I did have one for, let's say, uh, Pokemon cards, mm-hmm. which I do, everyone like I would be like. Look what I fucking pulled, dude. Oh, yeah. This is fucking sick. And people are like, oh, yeah, that's good shit, bro. Yeah. But that makes sense. And you sense. can, like, if you get good enough storm footage, you can sell it. You and can sell I, it? I did do that once. I actually chased a storm that dropped a tornado just north of Chico. No fucking way. Fucking way. Yeah. How much <laughs> did, did you sell it for? Uh, I should have sold it for more. I could have sold it to, like, multiple people. But uh-huh. this is the first time I really, like, gotten really good footage. Uh-huh. Everyone's asking for it. No and, you know, way. Like, I had the I had the knowledge to ask for money for it. Yeah. But I didn't know exactly how to ask for money for it. How much did you ask? I just like this one person was like, "Can we buy that video? It's a seven second video." Yeah. They said, "We'll give you 150 bucks for it." No fucking way. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, take it. <laughs> Send me the check." <laughs> What? <laughs> and like the entire video of this tornado was 20 minutes long i wow. sold a clip of seven seconds for 150 bucks and i also you know i tried to like push it to other platforms but uh-huh. then i realized there's a whole lot of like contracts and stuff yeah. that i just did not want to deal with these people though they're like we'll send you a check for 150 bucks i said sure and let them post my video and wow probably like a couple of months later i actually got the check but did they give you credit or no i imagine they don't they did oh. yeah they like when you like take a video like that is your property mm-hmm. and no matter like i guess there's ways if you sell it mm-hmm. and sign a contract someone else could take possession of it yeah like you could sell but, your rights to the video yeah but if you don't sign anything like here you yours. can use this like yeah you can tell them you must credit me or whatever mm-hmm. so yeah i did that and then like the local news stations like i'll let them just use it like i'm not gonna make them really because the local news stations don't make that much money yeah it's the national media though like they you'll see this if you go on weather twitter every good video they're like hey can we use your video for free like, sign this no. contract and it's like they'll try to scan you out of your will, fucking weather like, video because they can make so much money off of it so they can sell they, that piece right yeah they'll they post it all over social media and they get tons of interactions oh that's right and then they can get those ads right and that's what most news stations make right. their money off of is ads and there's so many people that will do that because they you know maybe they want the the next the position up popularity yeah. of having yeah. their stuff all over so but yeah Whoa. you can actually sell this and like you shouldn't let the big corporation just take your stuff you should actually sell it that's fucking wild i didn't know there was like weather politics oh <laughs> <laughs> don't even get me started on that uh, i'm not even in too deep but there's there's a lot going on there it's hilarious who's the, who's the worst weatherman out the worst weatherman Name drop uh, right now i'm not even gonna name man but there's multiple people who claim to be storm chasers and drive straight into a tornado and then post the video because they just drove straight into a tornado and almost killed themselves oh, <laughs> like fake posers dude at least like take it in from afar don't try and kill yourself don't put other people in danger you know like all right but yeah there's a, there's a few like that who <laughs> So there's a code of ethics, <laughs> yes. like wind chasing yeah. or like storm chasing. <laughs> wind chasing. <yeah. laughs> wind cha- I'm sorry. I the, meant, the, I meant storm the wind chasing. chasing code of ethics. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a book. It's a course. You should teach that course, dude. Like, I I didn't think it got that deep. I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. I thought it was just like people casually as a hobby mm-hmm. storm chasing. That's kind of what it is for me. I don't sell my stuff anymore because it's too much work to. Yeah. Has anyone made a career? Yeah. Look up Reed Timmer. Okay. This dude is, he calls himself an extreme storm chaser. Well, you're number one to me, Bradley. <laughs> you're I'm number one storm chaser. Yeah, you're, you're the best storm chaser to me, Bradley. I don't care. <laughs> I don't follow anyone else's chasing storms. <laughs> Fuck them, dude. You're the best one, dude. You're no, the coolest one. <laughs> but yeah, there's tons of people who are making a living. And I mean, it takes a lot to get to that point because you need a following. You need 
You need to have connections where you're selling your stuff, and you need to constantly do it. So they brand their weather chasing? I mean... So it's kind of like any yeah. other hobby, like skateboarding, flying planes, boat racing. Exactly like all of those. No, bicycling. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon card collecting. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, it, it's true, there's a market for everything, right? So yeah. there's like enough people who are like... Bradley's it's, fucking I would, cool. I would buy Bradley's T-shirt that says yeah. "Chase the Weather" <laughs> oh, shit. or something like that, I right? Some like, of those. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. The only, the only joke I can think of, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> I have to say it. Chase the Weather. You mean chase some bitches? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. Really bad joke. Bad chasing joke. I but only I chase it. storms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The okay. bitches can chase me. <laughs> <laughs> See, would that sell? Like, I don't know. Like. Is that your market? <laughs> I don't have a Twitter, mm -hmm. but I'll remake one to follow you. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, Threads now though, right? E e it's like X. X. Okay, Threads yeah, is the Facebook it's, version. It's Elon Musk's yes. little. X is the deal. new version of Twitter. Are you on Threads? I started it, but that never really took off. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, whenever you add another social media, it's just like more time out of your life. And I'm just like. I can't do it. I'm like, yeah, it's I hard. Really I have, I have a Instagram, a Snapchat, and a Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook, I don't do anything on. <laughs> Literally nothing besides go on Facebook Marketplace and look for dumb shit. <laughs> um, Instagram is where I do everything. Like that's the one where I'm always posting something for mm -hmm. LBS or for this or for myself, and messaging people, talking to them. And Snapchat's the one where I have conversations with people. I'll be it might be a photo of me saying. Time to go to work. Time to get this grind. That's my go-to. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I have nothing to say, it's hard for me to make up something, especially when I'm tired. But <laughs> mainly use those three. Obviously, the uh, TikTok, I guess, is one of them now. Ooh, okay. So, uh, but I've I know, said this I know some storm chasers that are on TikTok. And they got, I like, tons of followers. <laughs> is it too complicated? Is the market too thin? I'm too old. No. <laughs> <laughs> too old to be on storm chasing TikTok? Like, <laughs> you, you should start one. Fuck it. Like, yeah. do it. Like, and then I guess there's YouTube. But that one's oh, like a, yeah, that one's a broken one for me. Like it's it never it never goes anywhere. Yeah, I mean I'm not even trying to make money. Like, yeah, I Twitter. I'm like talking just to other weather storms. people, talking about the forecast, posting this cool shit I just saw. Mm -hmm. And you know that's that's basically the only place where there's a lot of other weather people. Mm -hmm. You know, Instagram. I've probably like all high school friends or something yeah. like yeah. that. And Facebook is, like, all family friends. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like, Twitter is the place where, like, all these people know the weather and talk about it. Huh. But I do post videos on YouTube, too. And that's where you'll find the tornado video. Hell yeah. But, so, bringing it all back. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm sorry. You went to college. You interned. Right. For the weatherman, Steve Poole. Yep. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Steve. So what happened after that internship? I realized I didn't want to be on TV. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So that's why you're not the weatherman. That's why I'm not the weatherman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I liked forecasting, mm -hmm. but I saw something I didn't want to be in all of these people on TV. They're like faking it? Yeah. They have multiple personalities. There's the fake TV one, and then there's the normal one. I just didn't think I could do that. Mm -hmm. I thought... I'll be on air someday, and I'll let an F word slip out. Yeah. That's why I'm cussing right now, <laughs> so people know that I'm a human. Yeah. Like I will say bad words in real life. Like I was talking with Destiny about, like I'm trying to be as real as I can be on the podcast. Sometimes my professional voice comes out where I sound like I'm not gonna cuss because of my job. But if it was up to me, I would say fuck, shit, poop, <laughs> pee. Um, I'm really, Dang, those are bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm into like really dumb humor. Like I yeah. love really stupid humor. Like it's good. It's good for the soul. But um, I get what you mean. I could not yeah, be a weatherman. I, I, I could not be a news anchor. I could yeah. not be someone on TV who's clean. I, I probably could, but then well, as soon as someone catches me say poop fuck shit, like it's over for me. You know? Not that I'm saying I'm dirty, yeah. but <laughs> like, it's just it, it's just too much to keep up. Yeah, and like the the personality thing, I was just like, I don't really want to, you know, have this whole like famous personality attached to me. Mm -hmm. That would be too much to take care of, and like I'm also hard of hearing, and like trying to listen to like other people while talking on TV just sounded like a whole lot of work. 
do you ever think that maybe you would be an inspiration to people who are hard of hearing? I maybe you seem like a pretty humble dude. Like you seem like a really humble dude who's like, what the fuck does my hearing have to do with anything? And I get it. I get it. But what if you did become the weatherman and you're like, hey, I'm hard of hearing, and that didn't stop me from becoming a TV personality. But I guess at the I... end of the day, you're chasing what you love the most, right? Which is storms. I mean. Yeah, that's I. I would much rather be out there watching this storm, than being on TV saying everybody watch out for this storm. Mm-hmm. So that's that's probably another part of it. I saw, you know, every single weather event that I thought was really cool and wanted to watch. These mm-hmm. people had to work. They had to go into work and yeah. be on TV the Being whole time. Miss out on all of it. Yeah. So, in the same way, this is completely unrelated. I originally, like before I decided on weather, I wanted to become a pyrotechnic because I love fireworks. That's fucking hype. I love but, fireworks. <laughs> for sure. And then I realized if you're a pyrotechnic, you have to make all this shit and you don't really get to enjoy it. No. No, you do all <laughs> you the gotta work. You got to be working during yeah. the firework shows. Yeah. So in the same way, like, you know, being on TV, you won't get to enjoy like what you want to do. So... I did, you know, I love the internship. I love meeting Steve Poole, great guy, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So after that, I think I graduated like a year later. Still wasn't sure. I worked at retail for another year after college. Mm-hmm. Found this job in Chico, and it was, you know. So you moved from no. Washington to Chico. Yep. Two states over. Yes. Yeah. And honestly one of the main reasons i took this job in chico was because there was a severe storm in 2019 happened over reading no way and oh was it no was it during like right after the fires it was because hmm, 2018 it was in, like may 2019 yeah, so it was shortly after yeah because like, all the fires happened in 2018 yeah and so there was a crazy storm after that Yes, it was one single thunderstorm, but it was the most beautiful thing like I had ever like, no fucking seen. It was way. like, you know, they have big storms in Texas yeah. and oh, whatever Texas, but yeah. this was like one Texas giant storm over California. And I saw the footage from this storm. And once I got the opportunity to like come down here, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> like so I want to chase that. That's so cool. And then when did you move up? You moved over here in 2019, 2020? Yeah, late 2019. So you were over here two years, and I didn't meet you till 2022. Mm-hmm. And that was randomly through... Um, I mean, I've definitely, like, I had gone to the skate park. Maybe I'd seen you at some point, but you I didn't probably know had. You were. It, so you met me in Corning. Probably. Yeah, through Patrick. I went to the skate park. I had the shop already. Yeah. So that was 2022. Mm-hmm. And Patrick Hale... Shouts out Patrick if you're listening to this. He was one of the original LBS team members. Um, I didn't even know Patrick that well, but like I started talking to Jacob and Patrick at the same time, mm-hmm. and then I think you were around them. Patrick was uh, Patrick and Jacob were on the team. Patrick was on the team before Jacob, and then Jacob got put on the team when I opened up shop. Mm-hmm. And um, um, Patrick, we just went to the Corning Park, and oh, yeah. um, Patrick was like, "Yo, I've been talking to this dude named Bradley over here. I told him about the shop." I'm like, "Oh, thanks, dude. And I met you, and you were yeah. a pretty chill, dude." Yeah, and... I, I am not the type of person to just go up and talk to people. So, but if someone comes up and talks to me, like, yeah, I as long as I can hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, my board, and like you just can't hear them. Yeah. So that's just a trip to think about. Like you came all the way over here. What yeah. town in Washington were you from? A uh, little island across from Seattle called Bainbridge Island. So you were on an island? I lived on an island. Whoa. I commuted by ferry every day. No fucking way. I worked in Seattle, yeah. You worked in Seattle? Mm-hmm. That's sick. Went to school in Seattle. And Did you listen to Nirvana? A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. You're from Seattle, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, cool. I had, had, I to, had to listen to Nirvana. Yeah. My sister loved Nirvana. Uh-huh. Maybe that led to me not being so obsessed with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> like the rest of the world. <laughs> but Shouts yeah, I know Nirvana their songs. <laughs> yeah, I know a song or two. You met... I know who Kirk Cobain Yeah, you met him. You met him. You told him the weather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you talked about meteor like lights at a bar or something like that. He's like, all right, dude, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. So you went like from a huge city. I don't know how big Seattle is. Um, I thought of going to Seattle. 
bringing it back to my finals test when I got in a car accident, it was for criminal justice. And I wanted to be a cop in Seattle at the time. Oh. Yeah. Because it had, it had the highest wild. crime rate. <laughs> it had one of the highest crime rates. I used to want to go to school for psychology, filmography, and criminal justice. But luckily, I did not do that. The, Maybe I would have met I must you. Say. Maybe I would have met you. It's like, hey, yeah, there's a guy chasing a storm. We need to get, <laughs> you get him to stop. Oh. oh, my God. But that just brings up, like, this is kind of related. But, like... Man, I did not like cops growing up as a skater. Like, Yeah, I mean, when, most people didn't. When I was 14, I've only been in a cop in the back of a cop car once. Mm-hmm. And I was 14. I was just skating with my friends. Uh-huh. Not doing anything. Like, we were 14. Yeah. And this cop car pulls up. And he's like, put your boards down. Like, get on the ground. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, you guys can't be skating here. He called for backup. There's four, There's four of us there. All we were doing was skater. We're listening to him. We're 14. His backup comes, and they're like, you guys can't be skating here. And we're like, okay, we will stop. Yeah. And they're like, no, we got to take you home. What the? And this dude, like, I'm pretty sure these cops on this place I was from were a little bit sketchy. Mm -hmm. This dude frisked us. Like, I didn't. Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Like, they, they frisked us. Like, all we were doing was skating. The funniest thing was, like, I was 14. I had some weird-ass shit in my pockets. I had, like, a ping-pong ball and a lighter. And a sausage link. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) But, yeah, this dude, like, fixed us, and then, like, he, you know, felt what was in my pockets. He's like, what's that? And I'm like, it's a ping-pong ball. And he's like, What? Anyways, I think he realized after that, he's like, these are fucking kids. Like, yeah. why am I doing this? Yeah. Anyways, they threw us in the back of the cop car and drove us to my friend's house. And they took you home. his mom started yelling at them. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're just kids. That's crazy, dude. I, I never told, like, my family. I was afraid. I was like, I was in the back of a cop car. Like, I thought I was going to be in trouble. Yeah. And, you know, looking back at it now, I'm like, those fucking bastards. Like, yeah, dude. I mean, were some doing cops are weird, around. man. Some anyway, yeah. yeah, some I, I, you know, some cops are like that. I agree. Some cops are, you know, like good people. Yeah, but. of course. It is what it is, man. So that's <laughs> so totally that's sad. Your, yeah, no, dude. <laughs> that's your journey, huh? From all the way from Washington all the way over here, and now you've mm-hmm. been. You said you work for a company, a third party company. Yeah, we uh, it sells like weather stations, and we do forecasting. So, huh. And obviously it's, not, it's doing you know, well for you. Like you, I like your place. It's really nice. Yeah. It's comfy and you have a lot of cool fucking things in here. <laughs> I love it. I got a, ra- a lot of random ass things. Yeah, that's dude. for sure. <laughs> but that's pretty sick, your journey into weather and how it kind of went full circle for you. Yeah. And you didn't intend for it to happen no, either. it just kind of happened. See, Bradley, this is what I mean when I said you're a pretty interesting person. <laughs> I know you don't think you are. But your whole story you just told me and everyone who's listening is like a testament <laughs> to how like the universe kind of like shows you something when you're young and just like slowly guides you to it if you're like subconsciously listening. Not to get freaking mumbo jumbo spiritual on you. No, I feel it. I also like the other people in my family are not very sciencey. They're yeah. not very math. Yeah. Mathematical. Did they wonder like why is he going into weather? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Like what does he see in the store? <laughs> he's like, oh my god, he's is a weatherman. Like, <laughs> I've definitely gotten some flack for that. Like, yeah. why were you wrong? Like, oh come on, man, we're like predicting the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how? Okay, so I know it gets complex, and I complain all the fucking time. I, I do this every single time I talk to someone. It's like an icebreaker, but. I, I talk about the weather as an icebreaker, dude. Yeah. Like, that's my go-to. Right. Like, oh, this crazy weather we're having. Am I right? Today, I was like, yeah, crazy mm-hmm. storm yesterday. <laughs> it's my casual, like, topic to talk about. But I get it. It's unpredictable. Oh, yeah. And, and, I mean, that's kind of funny you bring that up. Because, like, if you bring that up with me, like, I'll just start going off. Yeah. How was the weather? Oh, like, this happened, this happened, this you happened. Ever have to say, <laughs> you ever have, like, a casual conversation <laughs> with someone at the grocery store, at, like, a clerk, and they're like, Whoa. crazy weather, and you're like... It's a little too Look, much. buddy, you don't even know about the weather. Like, I know the weather, dude. I know the weather. I, I chase that fucking shit. You don't know anything. Is that what goes on? 
think you know the weather? Fuck you. (laughs) 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 Well, Bradley, (laughs) I really enjoyed this conversation. For sure. And I appreciate all the weather knowledge you've given me. Oh, yeah. You give me some knowledge, too. I hope so. Tasmanian devils and fetishes. Yeah, Yeah, it's the only knowledge I have. (laughs) That's what I got out of college. Like, (laughs) thank you, universities and community colleges. But is there anything you'd like to say to anyone listening? Obviously, you can follow Bradley on Instagram. That's the only thing I know. The Instagram, which is Yeldar Bean, which yeah. is Bradley backwards, Just... which is one thing I used to do, too. I'd call myself Soul Rock instead of Carlos, and my friend Jose would be called Asoy because the J is like a Y in Spanish. But... I thought that was fucking cool when I met you because I used to do that shit all the time. Oh, but yeah. if you just type in Bradley backwards, you can find him on social media, on yeah. Instagram. Is that your Twitter I, as well? Or no, your... my Twitter is Brad WX NorCal. That's like totally weather. It's like a gamer of... tag. Like, yeah, I guess yeah, so. Okay. So you get, if you're into the weather and if you think you want to get into the weather, go follow those two. And what's your YouTube name? I don't even know my YouTube name. But okay. if you just look up Tornado and Chico... You You'll find him. He's got the most popular one. He made money off that shit, right? But yeah. I just want to thank you, Bradley. Yeah, thank you thank for doing you. this podcast like, with me. And yeah, I guess I would fun. say one more thing. Like, you know, follow your dreams and whatever. Because, like, sometimes it might get you somewhere you don't really expect. But eventually you might end up somewhere that's pretty good. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to Sick Day's podcast. And I hope you have a good sick day, everyone. Thank you. Peace. Thanks, guys. Bye.